Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodmont, and over there we have John Lewandowski. Hey. Hey, John. How are you feeling? I, I've noticed you're feeling a little better today. Yeah, a little better. Yep. You know, go figure. We're all the drafts over, and we're all feeling better. We're all doing fine. Go figure, right? Right. You know, um, just uh, just so you guys are aware, the reason we're not live again today is we're taking just an extra precaution to make sure that both of us are better so we don't get each other sick or get each other's family sick. Right. Um, that is our number one priority. Um, number two priority is always plugging Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. Or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. They will outfit you for all your hockey needs to get ready for this upcoming Pee Wee's Beer League. Well, if you want to play, uh, I believe if your kids play for the Milwaukee Power, if you like rec skating and just skating, figure skating, they'll take good, good care of you. Um, with that being said, why we're here. Um, Obviously, at this point, like we said, the NHL draft is over at this point. Biggest winner out of the draft is obviously the Buffalo Sabres, number two being Columbus. Columbus has yeah. the second most picks in the first round. Those two teams are on a great way to rebuild themselves. Um, yeah, yeah. Nashville is in the process of trying to figure out their identity yet again, but we know what it is. Right. Obviously, looking at how they drafted, they're going for grit with a little bit of scoring touch. Yeah. Which is what you need to win championships. You guys like Yanni Gord, Pat Maroon, they don't win championships. You don't win championships without guys like that. Right. You don't. Um, you know, Brad Marchand, another one of those guys. Most people don't like him. Tom Wilson, another guy. You don't like him if you're playing against him. But right. you love that guy if he's on your team. So, and please don't tell me that you'd still hate them if they came to your team because you wouldn't. You're lying. Right. You know? Um, yeah, there are certain guys. I think, well, Zach Ronaldo, when he came here, I was not very fond of it. Um, I wasn't happy with that. I, I just didn't like him as a person, let alone a player. Right. Um. But let's check out Nashville's picks. Uh, first pick they picked was Fedor Spechnikov. Spechkov. We talked a little bit about it yesterday, but didn't go too much into it because we knew we were doing a full breakdown today. Right. He is 18 years old, six foot tall, 179 pounds. Has to put on a little weight. Yep. But that'll happen hopefully in the KHL this year, or if not, pay, playing in juniors. Right. So we'll see there. Um, he was projected um, by a lot of places, anywhere between 13th and 9th. Uh, Bob McKenzie had him at 17th. Right. Nashville picked him at 19th. Uh, Craig Button, another TSN draft guy, he had him at 6th. Nashville got him at 19th. Yep. Um, his abilities are as followed. He played in the VHL for 38 eight games, had five goals, 10 assists, and a plus three. Um, and then he played in the MHL for the same team um, and had uh, 15 games played, four goals, 11 assists, 15 points, and a plus five. So he went up a league and did better. Yeah, he did. So that says something. He will be playing for SKA St. Petersburg, which is also where last year's first round pick plays currently. Um, Igor, I think it is Igor. Wait, it's Oskarov. Oskarov is, is our first last year. So with that, he, he has a lot of upside to his game. And, and it brings a lot of uh, potential there. Right. Um, their second pick was Zachary LaRue. Yep. Ugh. 
Uh, Zachary Lahu is was picked 27th overall. He was projected uh 29 27 45 30 25 31 12 30th so right around where he was picked right um he is 18 years old 5 11 196 so he carries a lot of weight in that small frame yeah he does um he will be playing for the Halifax Mooseheads this year last year with the Halifax Mooseheads. He had 33 games played, 19 goals, 20 assists for 39 points, 70, or 47 penalty minutes and a minus seven. But that's nothing compared to what he did with the Moncton Wildcats. The Moncton Wildcats of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Um, he played 55 games, 20 goals, 33 assists, 53 points, 70 penalty minutes with a plus 34. Yeah. yeah. And then when playoff time comes around, he played one year with the uh, Shooting the Gray uh, Grenaders. Uh, he played uh, there for two years, uh, 2017 and 2018. Is the Quebec major. Uh, Amateur, uh, it, it's Bantam, Bantam Hockey. Right. right. Uh, 41 games, 21 goals, 31 assists, 72 penalty minutes, plus nine. But then when the playoffs hit, he had seven games played, two goals, six assists, eight points, 16 penalty minutes, and a plus two. This kid knows his hockey. Yeah. yeah. So yet another good pick in the first round for Nashville. Oh, yeah. We will be paying heavy attention to our prospect pool. For those of you who want to watch, check out our video. It's called Nashville Predator System Update. Um, when we do those videos, those normally go on YouTube. So please go over and subscribe to our YouTube page. You will get all of your prospect updates from us right there um, with guys like Fetchkoff and Zachary Lahu. Right. That's going to take some time getting used to. Well, then we get the Preds had no second pick because they traded their two, two, two seconds to Carolina to pick up LaRue. Yep. Um, and they pick up Anton Olsen in the third from the Malmo Red Hawks. Last player that Nashville got from the Malmo Red Hawks was Jonas Gunnarsson. Okay. Um, that was way back. <laughs> right. Um, he's 18 years old, six feet tall, left-handed shot defenseman, 183 pounds. Um, he was ranked in the top in the 90s. To to I mean, it these draft rankings they rank anywhere. He ranked anywhere from 98th being the highest to the lowest being 23. He was ranked 37 by Craig. Right. Wow. By Craig Button and 51st by Bob McKenzie. He was drafted 72nd overall. Nashville got another steal there. Yes, they did. Um, he has an amazing shutdown ability. He has the ability to skate. Um, he does lack uh, puck control and passing at times, but can play um, with a little work. Um, Scott Ford will iron that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, last season for the Malmo Red Hawks, uh, he had uh, 39 games played, four goal, uh, four assists for four points and a plus two. He did play two playoff games, no points. Uh, Sweden's U8, he had uh, three assists, U18, as well as their international juniors collection. Uh, he had three assists there as well and a minus two. All right. Um, Good upside for everything going on there. Um, yeah. We all look forward to seeing these guys in Admiral's uniform. At some point. Yeah. Some of them long, will take longer, like this next guy, to get there. Depending. Okay. And when you're looking at prospects, don't think that, you know, some of them will go to 
their junior teams. Others will go to college. College could take anywhere from two years to four years to get them right. back to play in the pros. Yeah. All depending on what's going on around them. You know, if they want their degree or not. Right. So, with that being said, up next, they drafted Ryan Ufko. I hope I pronounced that call correctly. Uf- Uko, Ufko, Ufko. Ufko. They drafted him in the fourth round, 155th overall. He was ranked no lower or no higher than 90th overall. Nashville picked him up at 115. Yet again, another steal in the draft. He is 5'10 right-handed shot. Something you don't see all that often. He's an offensive style of play. Uh, defenseman with an with it with a hard shot, and he is tenaciousness on the boards. That is according to the scouting report. Um, according to last season, the Chicago Steel is where he played. Uh, everybody that's any good goes to the Chicago Steel. Apparently, apparently, uh, he had thirty five games, ten goals, twenty nine assists, thirty nine points, and a plus fifteen. They also won the championship this year. Um, they had he had eight games played, one goal, six assists for seven points and a plus four, four penalty minutes. He doesn't really go to the box all that often. No, he, he will doesn't. be attending UMass how, uh, in the NCA. So he's already committed to a college. Yeah. All righty. So then we have Jack Matei. Jack Matei is a 18-year-old, six foot four defenseman, 205 right-handed shot. Okay. Yep. Okay. He was drafted in the fourth round, 124th overall. He was ranked no higher than 103 by EliteProspects.com. He was ranked by Bob McKenzie at 96. Uh McKean's hockey at 82. Um, nobody else had him really scouted. He did win a World Junior Championship this last year. Okay. If I remember that correctly. Yep. Uh, he is a good skater for being six foot four. Um, being able to keep up with the uh, smaller forwards. Um, he nice. has a six foot eight wingspan, which will increase his reach as far as poke checking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and he has no problem blocking shots, led um, his team in block shots this last season. This last season for the Ottawa 67, he did not play. They did, OHL did not play. So we're yeah. going off a of 2019 stat. Yeah. All right, so he was uh, 56 games, played nine assists, and a plus 11 with 19 penalty minutes. He did play in Canada's U18. He had seven games, played one assist, and a plus one. Um, Overall, I think that he will be fine um, once he gets to the Admiral's system. All right, now here's a guy which is a little kind of confusing. If you are an Admirals fan, you may see him this year. It all depends uh, what goes on in camp. We have Simon Knack, who is 19 years old, which at this point makes him AHL League eligible. Yes, it does. All right. So with that being said, he's six foot one right winger. He shoots left-handed which means that on the right side, he is on his strong side. So right. when you're shooting, if you're uh, a right-handed shot, you want to be on the left-handed side of the ice or left side of the ice to get your most accurate shot. Right, you do. And he is from Zurich, Switzerland. Last player in Nashville drafted out of Switzerland was Simon Moser before that was Roman Yossi. All righty. Um, he also has a little bit of a Rocco Grimaldi style to him. Uh, he loves being able 
to forecheck and disrupt the play. But then at, not only that, he will disrupt defenses with his puck carrying and, and quickness. Right. So, and he has an ability to find his teammates while under pressure. He, and, and this is off of Elite Prospects 2021 Draft Guide. even off the backhand so he can find his teammates and go stick to tape with a backhand all right that is a lot of ability right there all yes, right let's get into where he was this last season this last season he played for hockey davos in the uh national hockey league now national hockey league is over there in switzerland um he played 23 games, three goals, five assists, eight points against men. Right. Then he went back to juniors and just ripped it. Um, he went to uh, Portland for their season once they started decided to play, which was right around the playoffs. Literally, they were right. playing every day. And he played 24 games, 16 goals, 13 assists, 29 points, and a plus seven. This dude really has a knack for scoring. Right, he does. By the way, get used to us being punny. <laughs> he also went to the juniors U20. He had four games played, one goal, minus two. He also went to the International League, International World Cup style. Played eight games there, three goals, one assist, four points. Right. With that being said, that is all of our picks for this year. Yep. And there they all are on my screen. You can also find these pictures and images on all our social media. So check us out over the next couple of days. We're going to be breaking down um, our free agents coming up. Um, we have till Wednesday, so most likely you'll be seeing us um, Monday or Tuesday, uh, breaking down how we're gonna, who we're gonna bring back, what's gonna happen in between, and if there is any breaking news, right. we'll also be going into that. Right now, as it currently sits, Nashville has nine forwards, five defensemen under contract for their NHL roster. That are signed up for next year. Um, as far as our prospect pool of guys who are un uh, well outside of the one that is signed, uh, I'm not sure what's going on there, but let me check that out. Anyway, uh, we have Isaiah Walther, Igor Afan Afanasiev. He will be playing for the Admirals this year. He is coming pro. Right. So there is a uh, little bit of a tidbit for you guys. He did play some games for the Wolves last year in the American Hockey League. So hopefully he took the time to scout their playbook a little bit. Um, we got guys like Adam Willsby and uh, Yusuf Parsonen, who also signed their uh, entry-level deals. Uh, right. Uh, Parsonen is signed. I believe he's signed. Yeah, he is signed. Through 2023-24. And he is being loaned to Liga one more year just to make sure that he's fully ready. But if the uh, Preds decide, hey, we're going to send you to Milwaukee, then that's what they'll do. Um, but in Liga, he had played 50 games, 55 games last year. Uh -huh. Goals, 34 assists for 42 points and a plus seven. Also in the playoffs, 13 games. One goal, seven assists, eight points, and a plus one. This kid can dish it. Yeah. Um, he's had similar moments. He can score too. Um, his ability, he's 20 years old, six foot three. When they drafted him, he was only six feet tall, so a bit of a late growth spurt for him. Yeah. Um, just giving you guys a little bit of an update there. Uh, Vladislav Yeramenko, Nashville, owns the rights to him um, until he returns. Um, he is signed through for Dynamo Mints through this season. 
he will be making his return back to the uh, American side after that. His first year in the KHL did not go as well for him as he had hoped. Uh, he played uh, 53 games, uh, three goals, seven assists, minus 23. So his first year did not go as well as he would have hoped. His second year, he really turned it around with 44 games, five right. nine goals, five assists, nine points with one six. He also played for Belarus in the World Cup, um, where he is from. Uh, he had one goal and a minus six. Belarus really doesn't have that great of a World Cup team, so no matter how good you are, um, doesn't really, you know, one guy don't make a team. No. Um, and he, like I said, he will be playing for Dynamo Minsk this season. Um, every time, everywhere he goes, he makes playoffs. So there's a lot of upside for him as well. Um, Nashville has two goalies in uh, their uh, prospect pool left. Um, we're really right. in that department, so I would not be surprised to see us go uh, pick up a goalie. Um, uh, Konstantin Volkov will be going to Liga this year in Sweden. He's 23 years old, six foot four. Um, if he does not make the jump soon, I believe Nashville is just going to let him go and go into the agency. Um, last year, he uh, the, over the last few years, he just played in Russian minors, which is probably why he's a little bit frustrated and leaves. Right. Um, he does have a winning record, but it, it, it does get frustrating when you're a bit behind. Um, so then that leaves last year's number one overall pick, uh, Yaroslav Askarov. Askarov is a six foot four goaltender with a, he's 19 years old, catches right handed. He did grow. Um, he was six foot three when we drafted him. He, he went up about an inch. He also put on 20 pounds. He was 150 when we drafted him. He's now up to 167 or 170. Right. So he put on a little bit of muscle or weight to tune himself up. Um, last year for uh, St. Petersburg, he went five and four with a 1.21 goals against average. Uh, he will be playing for SKA St. Petersburg again this year. Um, he has never had a plus three goals against average ever. That's pretty amazing. Your, his first year, he had a 1.67 or 1.96 goals against average with a 0.93, uh, 0.913 save percentage. Yeah. He had 15 year wins in his second year with a 2.37 goals against average, which is about average in the NHL. Right. Uh, uh, his average. Uh, Last year with SK St. Petersburg, he played one game, 2.00 goals against average with a 0.920 save percentage. He also won that game. That was the only game he played, and he won it. Right. So there's a lot of upside inside our prospect pool. Yes, there is. So we're going to see what happens inside there as well. So there's a lot looking forward. Um, just so that everyone does um, not feel left out here, the ECHL free agency has opened. That yeah, started yeah. today. Right. And I'd like to make our viewers aware of the home openers. The Florida Everblades open October 23rd versus the Jacksonville Icemen. The Admirals will open against the Grand Rapids Griffins on October 16th at home. And the Nashville will open on October 14th versus the Seattle Kraken. Um, unfortunately, they opened the 14th, correct, against the Kraken? Yes. All right, because uh, unfortunately for us, we will not be able to make it down to Nashville for the opener. Right. For Nashville, we are trying very hard to look into our schedules and look into our lives and make sure that we could uh, 
be happy with everything. Right. Um, going forward, because we want to make it to the winter, what is that, the uh, outdoor series or stadium series? Yes. Um, so those are things we're also looking forward to as well. Um, we would also like to announce that we would like to congratulate Brad Ralph, Jesse uh, Kalachi, I think that is. Uh, he, they are, uh, uh, Brad Ralph is the head coach of the Florida Everblades. He will be returning uh, for five years. Um, and uh, their assistant coach signed a three-year extension. Yep. As well as um, they signed uh, Mr. Everblade, uh, yep. John McCarron, their captain. They brought him back for a season, as well as um, bringing back Ben Masala. Yep. Um, we will see where all this goes going forward, but uh, some news for the Everblades fans out there. Uh, we do have some. Uh, had some stuff for you that we had not released ourselves. Yeah, um, we've been a little bit busy with the uh, draft, expansion draft, and all of the trades going on. With that right. being said, there's gonna probably be Monday till we're done with all the trades and everything. So until those are all completed probably opening day of free agency while we have some time while we're, we're planning on trying to be live opening day of free agency me and him will get together I'll throw on uh, NHL um, network or ESPN whoever has an NHL free, free agency frenzy right. uh, that's what it's been called for many many years um, I would also like to thank the Admirals, Predators, and Everblades for giving us all of our content because with the draft completed, we're on to 2021-22. Yeah. Last year was last year. This year is a new year. Let's go. We're ready to go. Everything is completed and done. So everything yeah. from last year that's gone, we leave it be. Um with that being said, I'm really looking forward to some of what these prospects may bring. Right. Maybe, a year from now, maybe a year from now, maybe this year. We don't know. Right. You never know in this league, and you can't say you do because you don't. You're not in the room with them. Right. But what I will say is we're pretty happy with their selections. Yeah. Um, we're probably going to go do a deep dive also Monday of Seattle to see how everything for them panned out. Right. With Seattle being the new team, um, you can uh, pretty much bank on everybody jumping on that bandwagon. Right. With that being said, with the Seattle Kraken. You can get all your Seattle Kraken merchandise at Hockey Locker. <laughs> so... I hope you guys enjoy. You can also get Predators merchandise um, and Admiral's gear. So, yep. see you guys Monday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. For those of you in Wisconsin, stay cool. It's a hot and humid one. Yeah. So, Thank you, everyone. See y'all later, and thanks for watching our draft coverage.